My name's Aaron Massey from MrFixItDIY.com, and today I'm gonna to show you how I built this little library. Since moving to Colorado, my wife started her own speech therapy practice, and to help get the word out, we decided that we would sponsor a new playground that's being built here in town. And as part of it, they also were looking for a little library that they could put up at the park. I figured that's something that I could easily do. So today I'm gonna to show you how I went about building this in case you're interested in building one for yourself. This video is brought to you by my friends at Krylon who are gracious enough to sponsor this project. I'll be using their products to finish this project. So make sure you guys stick around for more information on that. So thank you to Krylon for sponsoring this project. Now let's get started. The first thing that I did was take a piece of scrap three quarter inch plywood and cut it down to size with my track saw. I still don't have a full shop set up, so I haven't had my table saw set up for about a year. So this track saw is coming really handy. And the next thing I did was take a piece of T111 siding and cut that with the track saw as well. I cut the piece at 22 and a half inches and then cut that down further to make a kind of a shed roof. I'm not going off a plan for this project. I'm just kind of building it on my own and seeing what I come up with. We get a fair amount of snow here, so I wanna make sure that everything can shed off. So I ended up uh, just kind of eyeballing it and making sure that I was gonna get a good slope on it. I went from 22 and a half down to 16 inches, which ended up being about 22 and a half degrees or a 512 pitch. I'm a freaking dummy, I already screwed up. I cut two of the same side instead of flipping it over. So I guess I gotta cut another one. So after I cut the second piece so that the textured siding side was facing out, I could glue everything up and I just used some wood glue and some brad nails to hold the two sides to the base. And then I measured and cut out a panel for the back side. Now the difference between the back side and the sides is I added the 22 and a half degree kind of beveled edge to the back. So that way when I put the roof on, it sits flush and I don't have a gap where bees or something can get in there. From there, I ripped down another piece of plywood to act as a little shelf to go in the middle. I just made it like an eight inch shelf. So it covered roughly half of the back side of the box. If I were to do this project again, I'd probably make the whole thing a little bit taller. That way you have more room on the top shelf to add taller books, but it works fine. You can turn them sideways and it's probably just gonna be a pile of books at some point anyway. So from there, I just took uh, more of that scrap plywood and I cut a piece for the roof. And the way that I measured the roof was I just wanted a two inch overhang all the way around. So roughly measured the whole box and then just cut a piece of plywood that was two inches wider. So I have a nice little overhang. From there, I caulked all the seams to get everything ready for paint. And then I added some one by two trim pieces all the way around uh, the perimeter of the roof itself and then also on the shelf before patching all the brad holes with some painters putty. I want the inside of the box to be nice and bright so I'm using the Krylon Fusion all-in-one in a satin white finish. So I added three coats directly over the wood itself. This is an all-in-one paint so you don't have to prime anything beforehand which is kind of nice. It's also quick drying so you can apply multiple coats pretty quickly. Next I added some waterproof flashing tape to the roof now, I normally wouldn't use something this nice. Zip is a uh, pretty expensive material, but I had a bunch of rolls left over from actually from our previous house, so I used that. From there, I started working on the face frame for the front of the box, and I did this separately so that it was easier to paint the inside of the box rather than having this on in the first place. So I cut some one by four strips and then mocked it up so that I had a little bit of a trim overhang for the corners. And once I had all my measurements in place, I used my pocket hole jig to drill and screw together the whole face frame and then mocked it up with some more one by twos to kind of wrap the corners and then glued and shot everything together with brad nails. Much like the main back panel for the box, uh, for the front of the face frame at the very top, I had to cut that same 22 and a half degree bevel on that piece. So that way it sat flush up against the roof of the box. If you saw the way that I painted my shed, you know that I'm kind of a sucker for a dark green with like a cream accent trim. So it's actually perfect that this year's color of the year from Krylon is Spanish Moss, which is this dark green color. It's super easy to apply because it doesn't require any sanding or priming. And it goes on fast with the big button spray tip. And for a little bit of contrast, I decided to paint the fascia this kind of creamy matte clamshell color. So next I got started building the door I took some basic measurements off the frame and then used some one by fours to build a basic template. And then I took those over to the router table and cut a little half inch by quarter inch deep rabbit so that I could put a piece of plexiglass in 
before I went back and used my pocket hole jig to put everything together. I used some dowels and some wood glue to fill the pocket holes and then cut them off flush before coming back through and giving everything a nice light sand. And then I gave the door a few coats of clamshell paint and set it aside to dry. While that was setting up, I took a piece of plexiglass and cut it down to size to fit inside the door. And then I took it over to my Glowforge and I designed a little logo to engrave on the glass so that it kind of had a nice little character to it. And once it was finished engraving, I held it inside the door panel with a bead of clear silicone before moving on to the roof. Now I have a composite tile roof, but fortunately my neighbor has a shingle roof and I asked him if he had a few spare shingles lying around and he was kind enough to let me have a few so that I could put those on as the roof. And then I added a couple hinges to the door and mocked it up in place. Now that I've got everything painted, I'm hitting the whole thing with this Color Max clear coat. Just gonna give it a little bit of extra protection since it's gonna be outside in the elements. So lastly, I added a little handle for the door and I recessed a couple rare earth magnets in the door and in the frame itself so that it could latch properly and a tap light in the ceiling. And that was it, I finished it up. So that's it for this project. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did enjoy it, please hit that like button and leave a comment down below and let me know. Also, I wanted to say a quick thank you to Krylon for making this project possible and encourage you guys to check out their full line of products at krylon.com. And if you wanna find out more about this project or any of my projects, you can always visit my website at mrfixitdiy.com. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you next time.